Merry Christmas. Hi, welcome to Kenneth Spader Christmas. In this episode, I want to cover connecting pixels to your controller, and more specifically, how to connect power. Now, controllers typically come with 5 amp fuses on their outputs, and that's good for about 50 to 80 nodes. But if you want to power strings longer than that, you have to connect them directly to the power supply. And if you do that, make sure you insert a fuse in the line. The Falcon F16 V2 controller can drive 680 nodes per output, or 10,880 nodes because it's a 16 output controller. The chips in each node regenerate the data at each node, but you can't connect 680 pixels to a single power supply. So there's a process called power injection, where you connect power at several points down the line to keep them all lit properly. Now in my experience, 12 volt lights require less power injection than 5 volt lights. I've got a demo to show you in just a minute. Now it all depends on the particular set of pixels that you have, but a general rule of thumb for calculating power requirements is to use 60 milliamps or 0.06 amps per node. There's three LEDs in each node. Each one of those pulls 20 milliamps at full power. Again, check the specifications on your pixels to make sure. Now you probably won't run these at full power because they're just too bright. The first year I had pixels, I ran them at full power, and it lit up the neighborhood. Last year, I ran them at 30%, and that was plenty of light for residential decorating without being too obnoxious. So one-third is 20 milliamps, or 0.02 amps, uh, and there's somewhere in between is the sweet spot. I tend to go toward the higher end just to make sure my power supplies are not running at 100%, but you'll just have to decide for yourself. I have a small 5 volt, 12 volt shootout set up here. I've got 12 volt power supply running the controller and the 12 volt pixels. This 5 volt power supply powers the 5 volt pixels. The power supplies are tied together on the negative side only. Ethernet cable from the controller to a network switch. The switch to my computer or Raspberry Pi in this case. Now if you have more controllers you can hang them off the switch. I have a sequence programmed to run through a light test. All red, green, blue, and white at 100%. I know it may be hard to see with this camera, but the 5 volt string is noticeably more yellow toward the end of the string. The 12 volt strings do drop off a little, but they still look pretty good. Now if I inject power into the end of the 5 volt string, it brightens up, similar to the 12 volt lights. Now data only travels one way down the string but power can go either or both ways. If you have more nodes than a single power supply can handle, that's where it gets a little more tricky. You always want to connect all the negative sides on the power supplies together, but never connect the positive sides because they'll fight each other and possibly burn one or both of them out. Yes, technically you can use steering diodes to connect them, but that's beyond the scope of this lesson and really not needed for decorative lighting. If you design for 100% and run the pixels at 30%, you've got plenty of overhead. Now you can adjust the numbers a little, but I'd stay under 80% load on each power supply. This is a box that I created for last year's display. It's got four 12 volt power supplies, a controller, and a switch. I left plenty of room for cooling between the power supplies and I didn't have a failure. Now for this year, I'm expanding that to a larger box with more power because I'm adding more nodes. Plus, I want to clean up some of the wiring. I'll work on that in a couple of months. That's about it. I hope this information helps. As always, questions and comments below. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Mm. I am invincible. Yes, you are.